wetland. We see this all over. So what is, there's a little creature. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? Yeah. That's a hydrocycid. And what is that? Oh, it's a, you can learn a lot from sediment, like this clump of mud is from the bed of a Pennsylvania stream. If you know how to look at soil and sand, they will tell you stories of the people who live on the land and the plants and animals who share their landscapes. I'm Cornelia Dean, a science reporter for the New York Times, and because I'm fascinated by the way sediment moves and accumulates and erodes, I've spent a lot of time in the field with scientists who study this kind of geology. There's a nice piece of quartz inside here too, Bob. Recently, I traveled to central Pennsylvania, where Dorothy Meritz and Bob Walter, researchers looking at stream bank erosion, discovered something that is changing the way many scientists think about restoring damaged waterways. At one time, there were as many as 8,000 dams on the state's streams. Today, half have breached or been deliberately removed, and Pennsylvania is considered one of the nation's leaders in stream restoration. In places, Stream banks were shored up with rock and concrete to control erosion and flooding. We look at this and say, yeah, we've done a good thing with the dam removal because we've eliminated a safety hazard, we have opened up a free-flowing condition, and we used to think that that was the end point. But damage was still being done. We're in the Chesapeake Bay watershed here, so what goes on here has impact on the, the Chesapeake Bay itself. Despite efforts to rehabilitate streams, banks kept collapsing, sending sediment carrying nitrogen and phosphates into the streams and from there to the Susquehanna River and Chesapeake Bay. The chemicals adversely impact marine life. Everything from plowing techniques to runoff from parking lots has been blamed for the sediment runoff. Those are real problems, but two scientists, Dorothy Meritz and Bob Walter, think the source of the problem may be much older. We can't just look around at modern land use and say, we see agriculture, that's the problem. We see new suburbs, that's the problem. Right. Instead, go in and look at the history of that environment, that, can, that, that location. Dr. Meritz and Dr. Walter, who teach geology at Franklin and Marshall College, made a discovery here at Denglinger's Mill that they think may hold the key to better stream restoration and a reduction in sediment runoff into the Chesapeake. It all started when they sent a student to the stream to chart and photograph its banks. So well, they came back to the lab and they showed us a picture like this. And we said, those are laminated sediments. There must have been a pond there. So we said, there must have been a dam. And they said, there's no dam. And we said, well, we're sure there's a dam. We're going to go find it. And they did. They found remnants of a dam once used to power a local mill. That got Dr. Walter, who grew up in the area, to thinking that mill dams built as early as the 1600s might be behind the sediment problem. So then Bob said, I know there were hundreds of these, and I bet that there are hundreds of places like this along our streams, and maybe that's why there's all this sediment, and that's why there's all this erosion. And I said, Bob, there is sediment like this throughout the Piedmont, and I don't think you explain all of it from mill dams. And then he said, I bet we can. And he went and got an historic map. Soon, they were cross-referencing field sites with old maps, county records, and photographs. There's a mill pond. There is a mill pond. I probably missed one. There's a mill pond. Many of these centuries-old mill ponds eventually filled up with sediment. Even if the dam breached or was removed, the sediment remained. Everything from my shovel to the top is post-settlement. Dr. Walter and Dr. Meritz realize that the landscape left behind is not what European settlers originally found, but rather the legacy of their dam building. In fact, the silt is called legacy sediment, and it appears to be a big source of the damaging runoff. Upon breaching of these mill dams, you get this much bank erosion. Maybe this is what's causing a lot of the sediment coming into our streams after storms rather than other sources. And we began to realize that what we were doing was really changing or transforming some of the long-held notions about how streams formed in the region. The original landscape, the two scientists now believe, was buried under the sediment. Yeah, so that was about the thickness. That was the height above the, the bedrock of what the streams look like. And now if you look over my shoulder, you can see that this stream bank is about 20 feet high. Not everybody agrees with Dr. Meritz and Dr. Walter's ideas about the natural history of these streams. But many say their work means we must reconsider the best way to restore eastern watersheds 
and protect the Chesapeake Bay. So we began looking at restoration sites and realizing that many, many agencies and townships and government groups and citizens groups were trying to restore these streams, so-called restore them, by stopping them from eroding. And we thought, this is somewhat futile. These are dam breaches. These are mill ponds full of sediment. In other words, they were also solving a problem that was not the actual problem. Right. They had misdiagnosed the, the actual source of the problem. And then folks who were doing stream restoration said to us, well, tell us, what was there to begin with? We'll try to restore it to that condition. Here at the Banta site on the Lidditz River, they tested these new ideas. Workers dug out as much as 30,000 cubic yards of sediment. That's enough to fill 3,000 dump trucks. Instead of running in a deep channel incised through banks of silt, water now flows out across a plain. So we already know we don't have bank erosion. Right. We don't have substantial bank erosion here. So we don't have the sediment coming in from bank erosion. And native species, whose seeds survived centuries under the silt, are now thriving. The hypothesis that we want to test scientifically mm -hmm. is that what we now call stream restoration might be more effectively called a wetland or floodplain restoration. In the coming months, the scientists will track what happens to this restored wetland in hopes the data they collect will prove useful elsewhere. This work doesn't overthrow early work. It simply points out there's new information. Some of the fundamental things are still the same, except that there's a, a, a new piece to add to it.